In 800 feet, turn left onto Tucker Road. Take the next left onto Tucker Road, then you will arrive at your destination. Beaver Dam. You have arrived. At least the road's still very solid. Surprised that it's not marked. Wow, that's deep water. Must have gone through like a foot right there. Wow. It's got a barbed wire fence. Maybe there's cows in there. But where is the pipe? Wow, that's some deep water. You can definitely feel the car down in that a little bit. Like it wanted to float a tiny bit. Here is the culvert. Let's get out of the vehicle and take a little step outside and see what we got. Yep, so there's definitely a foot of water in the deepest spot of them. And that cone looks like it's been here a while. This looks like it's been an ongoing problem. Possibly a private road maybe. All right, I'm seeing at least two large concrete pipes. Oh, there's pavement underneath this. It just got so bad, they just, they just put gravel to try to make the road higher, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like there might be pavement underneath all that. This is either gonna be a super hard one or a super easy one. Gotta be careful of the barbed wire in there. All right, so animals already, you know. Maybe if we disconnect some of this barbed wire, maybe we'd have a chance at it. So how deep are those things in the first place? Not terribly the worst. I think we have a better chance of finding this one first, despite it being a few inches lower. Yeah, that's exactly what's underneath here. All right, I ha obviously got to gear up, and then we'll give this a shot. All right, everyone, we got camera number two going right now. Look at all that oil in the water. That's most likely just swamp oil, completely natural. People always ask, why don't you put the camera there or there? This is a lot of water. This whole area could flood and take it away. So we're going to attempt to drain this whole road, although it looks like the town doesn't really care about it. It might be a private road, but we're going to give it a shot. I see a barricade someone moved out of the road. It was definitely blocked off at some point. Now this is either going to be very easy or very hard. See this? It's been a problem for a while. Look at this cone in here. Oh, so this is the entrance of the pipe. Not out here. It's got all this in front of it. Look at this grass. Talk about neglect. I think we got right here. Well, if beavers are active, they'll be back here tonight. They've been here, yep, pretty recently. So is this the pipe? I thought it was. Maybe I'm wrong. We still got to determine how far out they go. Maybe that's not the pipe. Let's feel in there. It might just be going under to that. No evidence to, to back that up. Got to be careful. There's barbed wire down under the water. Is 
see if we can find it out here first before we really get into there. Yeah, I found the pipe. We don't have to deal with any of the barbed wire section. I found it right here. This water looks really gross, like there could be ducks or stuff living in here, which means probably high bacteria just by the color of it. We found the end of the pipe, but how deep is the dam? If the dam goes in there like five feet, it's impossible without heavy machinery. Oh, that's what it might be. There might be cow poop mixed in with this. We did drive by a lot of cows. Is there anything flowing? It's down there a bit. Yes, we're flowing. I got good hopes. Water is pretty deep, so I cannot just jam it into there. And this will become a dangerous one when we get it open enough. This water is disgusting. Sometimes it helps. Where's the end? All right. Definitely see a little bit of flow on the other side. We got something going. We are creating suction. Already got a world whirlpool going. Time to dig some more with the rake. Now that we got some suction, we can maybe let some things go right through. Or it'll jam it up more. If that's the case, this thing can't be done anyways. Of course it's Massachusetts with this type of neglect. You never find ones on public roads this bad anywhere else. That is sucking pretty hard down there. Nasty water. Hope that's not what I think it is. A metal structure kind of sucked in and crushed. Something's not giving. It feels like metal.
like to know if that's metal or not. Can't tell yet. It's way down in there. Let's try the other pipe. I think this is it right here. Yep, that one's already going also. <sighs> if you guys can hear it, I'm not sure. I left the vehicle running just because of the water we went through. I hear it making noise like some of it got into the exhaust. I'm just waiting for it to dry. I think I'm just going to go all the way in and flood myself. I think we can get it open. That's why I'm considering just getting on down in there. But this water is nasty. I can already feel myself getting wet. Yep. I'm getting flooded and it's sure cold. I'm also hesitant because I know these have the potential to be very dangerous pipes when they are fully opened. problem is, if I do get all the way down in there, I can't get anything in there yet. That's being the biggest problem. And there's little fuzzy feathers everywhere, so there's definitely ducks in here. Something like that.
Whoa, cold and nasty. It is flowing good despite what it looks like from the surface. We already got it a quarter open, it appears. And y'all always ask why I don't wear taller boots. Because I know damn well it's dangerous being near that thing. It's too deep. And now I can barely walk. If I had flooded boots up to my neck, I wouldn't be getting out of there. How much did we improve it? The DOT, I am gonna search up who look who owns this road. Look at this, we flooded the whole downstream. Look at that, all the grass is underwater from it. Well, I'm going to figure out who owns this road. Considering it used to be paved, it might be the DOT. We're going to figure it out and blow up their phones tomorrow with phone calls once we figure out who owns this. I can't stress enough how disgusting water like that can be. I just put a towel down on my seat so I can drive, and I also for now took my big high boots off. I'm waiting for my pants to drip dry before I put my shoes back on. I'm just driving with some Crocs I keep in the car for these times. So this scares me here how they recently repaved that but didn't pave it down here. This might be a private road, but why is it blocked off with that official looking thing right there? We, get, we gotta do some research and see if we can pin this on the DOT or not. More neglect. And the, the, you know the sad thing about Massachusetts is, if you damage your vehicle on a pothole or flood it out like right here, they're not responsible like other states might be. That's how messed up their roads are. They know damn well their roads are messed up. And yes, there is pavement underneath here. This water is pretty deep, but I'm going more on the edge this time. There's definitely pavement under there, but it looks like in certain areas it may just be gone. And that's why we're sinking so deep. This was paved at some point. Lots of neglect going on right there. And I, if I had stayed in there, I probably eventually would have got them completely open. But I know the current I was starting to create was starting to become dangerous. But as the downstream area was starting to flood, of course the current was... I mean, the suction would have started slowing down since the entire pipe couldn't have got to its capacity. With that being said, there was little feathers floating around absolutely everywhere, and that is telling me that there's definitely things in the water, like ducks, other kind of aquatic birds, which create E. coli when they pollute bodies of water. There was a lot of cattails in that pond, which help. Like if you saw my video of Chickabee Zot Park, they are infested with E. coli so bad because they have no cattails or anything to help purify the water, but yet there are hundreds of ducks that live in there and Canadian geese. That's what creates the massive pollution problem, and there's also tons of farms around here which are probably going into it. Yeah, I see lots more beaver dams right there, and I'm pretty sure that's the same swamp the water we just drained is probably going underneath that bridge right there. And that beaver dam that I saw right there to my right is why it's backing up to the pipe. 
just stopped here on another bridge. Let me get over on this side and put the lights on. I want to show you this gigantic beaver dam. This is likely where that water is going to end up that goes through those two pipes and is going over that road. That beaver swamp is over a foot below capacity right now. They probably put that up. They usually put beaver dams up during really rainy times. So they're always going to be like that now that we're starting to get into the warmer months. They're a little below capacity, but that's why beavers are so beneficial. They have capacity available. It stops downstream flooding anytime it'll rain. Turn the roof lights off. All right, now we're going to just report that section back there. That water is stinky. It's on me. Thankfully, my shirt's not really wet. I'm sitting on a beach towel. I didn't put my beach towel back, but I took the one off my passenger seat. It helps the seats from not wearing out. I've always kept them over the seats. It keeps the seat in great condition. You've got a towel when you need it. If you want to go swimming or you get disgusting, like I always get disgusting. This is nothing unusual. But if it was the colder months, I wouldn't do it. Today, I'm going home. I live about four hours away from here, and I'll just take a shower. But if it was the warmer months and I wasn't planning on going home, I would just go bathe in a clean body of water. Or if I was out a long time, I might just splurge and get a motel room for that night. Not in Massachusetts, though. I have never found a motel room for under 80 bucks. But certain states, you can get them for 40 That's one of the reasons I don't do that often. It's the most expensive part of traveling when you can just sleep in the car. Lately, it's been nice and cold. You know, Massachusetts growing season starts usually May 1st, but I can't believe it. They're supposed, they have frost advisories a couple nights this week, and today is the 15th of May. I know my area, we're getting down to 27 on Tuesday. Tuesday night will be 27. But my growing season doesn't start until June 1st. That's normal, but the last frost last week actually killed a lot of the perennials that were starting to come up in the gardens, including the hostas. They started to turn brown from it. You know, they got frost damage, but um, unbelievably, a couple days later, oh, there's the DOT on his way. But anyways, that water is disgusting, and you can get flesh-eating bacteria from that stuff. I'm pretty sure I got flesh-eating bacteria last year from a body of water. I definitely had it, and that's all I'll say about it. That's not easy to get rid of. It's not easy to stop the progression of that stuff. Yep, I had to go on powerful antibiotics for a little bit. I can't prove where it came from, but I'm pretty sure it did come from some water. And that stuff, it, you know, skin grafting is very expensive.